Hello and welcome to Settled's exhibition space at the 2021 European Movement Conference. Settled is a UK-wide charity which is working to ensure that all EU citizens continue to call the UK their home post-Brexit. All Europeans living in the UK must apply for the EU settlement scheme before the deadline of June 30th. Otherwise, they risk losing their access to services and their right to remain in the country. In this exhibition space, we're going to speak about the issues facing EU nationals applying for the settlement scheme and what will happen if they do not complete their applications before the June 30th deadline. Uh, first, I'd like to speak with uh, Christina Tegolo, who is the service coordinator for the North of England. Uh, Christina, the start of this week marked 100 days until the deadline before which all EU citizens must apply for the EU settlement scheme. What will happen to those who do not apply in time? Thanks, Alec. Uh, it, it's a really important question, this one, because it highlights uh, the uh, people without a pre-settled status and settled status after the 30th of June will be unlawful in the UK, which means that they won't have the right to work, the right to rent, the right to use the NHS benefits, um, and the risk of deportation if they are founded without the status. Uh, but we have also to highlight that even people that apply before the 30th of June, but they receive their status after, if they were uh, not exercising treaty rights before the 31st of December 2020, will be considered unlawful until they receive a status. And this is because for the UK government, people, these people were actually unlawful even before. They weren't exercising treaty rights before the 31st of December. So only by gaining settled status and pre-settled status, they will be having a lawful status in the UK. So our advice, our strong message is to our fellow Europeans is that do not consider the 30th of June as the deadline in a way, apply as soon as possible and way within the deadline because you want to have your status as soon as possible. You don't want to be in the condition or be waiting for a status and at the moment, the waiting time, based on our evidence, is around 10, 12 weeks. Thank you, Christina. Uh, I'd like to bring in Eva Plajarova, who is the uh, service coordinator for South Wales. Um, Eva, uh, to play devil's advocate, you could say, well, EU citizens have had a long time to apply for their settled status. But what are the reasons some people have still not attained their settled or pre-settled status? Um, well, it, it was um, it was clear right from the beginning that uh, some people might um, not meet the deadline. Uh, however, COVID um, really hampered efforts, um, and um, reasons why people might not meet uh, might not need, meet the deadline is because they might not be aware. There are still people who believe that if they applied, their children are fine, that children don't need to apply, which is not the true. Um, also, some people believe if the children were born in the UK, they don't need to apply. However, if they do not have a British citizenship, they do have to apply. Um, there are also elderly residents who have been living in this country for 40, 50 years, for example, and they just don't understand why do they have to do it when they didn't have to do it before. Uh, also, there are elderly uh, residents who are in care, so they might not be informed about it. And uh, uh, relatives might be already British-born children who will not be aware because they are not EU citizens themselves. Also, a big problem is lack of ID documents, um, expired um, passports and national ID cards. Some countries now accept expired documents, but some still don't. Embassies are working uh, on limited hours. Um, sometimes to secure uh, an appointment at an embassy, you will be looking at four or five months um, to get the appointment. And if you look at the deadline end of June, we, we just don't have the time. Um, 
also evidence proving residence might be a problem for some people who live in, let's say, shared accommodation, or they have a living working position. Um, people who, for example, are au pairs, or they have a living uh, uh, catering job um, within the hotel premises. So these people will struggle, but also, uh, for example, women, their husband is uh, a wage earner and some women might not even have bank accounts because everything is taken care of uh, by the husband. Also, there are people who might be suffering domestic violence and they cannot access their documents because they are being withheld by the partner. Next uh, issue could be digital. Some people might lack access the internet or they might not have the right phone to do the EU exit ID check and also just the general understanding of the uh, language it's not just people who might have English as um, uh, whose English um, language is not very advanced even people who might be professionals uh, struggle to understand the immigration jargon, the, the language which is used um, by the Home Office. Um, so I think that's, that's a pretty good sum summary there why people might be in danger of um, <clears throat> missing out on a deadline. Yeah, it certainly was. Thank you, Eva. Um, Settled recently took on its first North Wales service coordinator, uh, Pavel. Why is outreach needed in that particular part of the country? Um, hi, Alec, thank you. Um, I think the, the main reason is that the applications to EUSS um, have been lower in Wales um, comparing to other UK nations. And um, there has been a concern um, in the Welsh government um, that settled shares that the information and support is not reaching certain sectors of communities affected by the EUSS. Um, and um, in Settled, we believe that um, it has been the case affecting North Wales um, specifically, um, as this part of the country is not highly um, urbanized and EU um, citizens um, and their communities are much smaller and harder to reach. Um, therefore, um, Settled is working um, hard to build a network of volunteers and to connect and identify um, communities that would need our services in the region. Uh, I'd now like to introduce the Settled Volunteer Manager, Maria Giorenti. Uh, Maria, Apologies. you've been with Settled since its inception a couple of years ago. Tell me about how the charity works through its large cohort of volunteers. Uh, we have about 100 volunteers and they are um, all registered uh, immigration advisors limited to the EU settlement scheme. And, um, and they are in um, the many cities around the UK in many places. So we have quite a wide reach uh, in England and Wales. And um, at the moment they are delivering uh, remote services. So we get a lot of uh, queries uh, via our dedicated uh, advice email that is advice at settle.org.uk and uh, we rely on our volunteers to get back to our beneficiaries using you know their language skills and uh, we also run dedicated telephone lines in different languages um, uh, they are operated by volunteers who can speak uh, you know speak those European European languages thank you Maria uh, I'd now like to bring in uh, Tony Petkova, who's the service coordinator for London and the South East for Settled. Um, on Tuesday, Settled CEO called on the government to reassure EU citizens that are experienced delays in attaining their passports and other national ID cards through their embassies and consulates, that they wouldn't find trouble later down the line when the deadline passes for the EU settlement scheme. How big a problem is this? Thanks, Alec. With uh, the approaching of the deadline uh, on, uh, the, on the 30th of June, it's becoming really a big issue uh, because, uh, as uh, um, Eva mentioned, a lot of uh, uh, embassies are experiencing delays and also there is quite a big uh, 
uh, backlog uh, of uh, dealing with ID documents. Some of the embassies, they uh, agree, uh, they uh, achieved an agreement with the Home Office and uh, uh, their citizens can use uh, expired passports uh, to apply, but not all, not all embassies, not all countries have done it. So um, when people don't have a valid uh, ID, and uh, uh, we uh, encourage them if they see that they won't be able to, to get one, they need to ask the Home Office for paper applications. Uh, the problem with this paper application is that they need to prove to the Home Office that they have done everything possible uh, uh, to obtain uh, um, their ID. And that, uh, uh, so they need uh, a letter or email from the embassies confirming this. And it uh, would be good if the, so the Home Office can uh, make this a bit uh, simpler and easier for people to do it. And also there is a big problem with young children children who were born in the UK uh, 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 after March, after when the pandemic started, uh, because uh, there were delays uh, in uh, getting their uh, birth certificates. Then these children, uh, their parents, they need to register them in their countries uh, of nationality, and then they, uh, they should apply for their first passport. So it takes quite a, a long time to be done. And with all these uh, delays in the embassies, it's becoming, uh, becoming uh, even uh, uh, more difficult. And uh, the last one I want to say is that uh, for children born after April 2021, they will have just three months to apply under the settlement scheme. And this is not enough at all, because uh, in these three months, um, their parents they need to, to get the birth certificate from the councils here. They need to legalize this document, uh, send it online and wait for it, maybe for 10 days, two weeks. Then they need either to go to their country of nationality or to send the power of attorney to someone there to register the baby in their country. And, and then they can apply for the baby's first passport. So it will take, uh, I, I would imagine, more than three months just to, uh, to uh, make sure that they have the passport. So it, it's, not, uh, it's not enough at all. And uh, we have quite a lot of inquiries from people, parents who are worried about this. Thank you, Tony. Um, I'll open up the next question to everybody here. Um, the government has announced that more than 5 million applications have been made to the EU settlement scheme. So why then do we still have so much to do? Uh, we don't know many uh, double counting there is. So people, uh, for example, who have applied to ICE for pre settled status because they con they broken their continuous residence and they made a second application to restart the clock. And people who have applied for pre settled status uh, and, and then apply for set of status because they reach the five years time. Um, I know personally someone who applied three times because applied twice for pre set of status and then for set of status. So they wanted one person, three applications. But the number is also concerning because if we look, for example, at the over 65, the stats say that uh, less than 90,000 people have applied, which is a lot less than what the Home Office was uh, estimating. And uh, our, if we look at the Italian community, and I'm, I was close, um, I am Italian, I'm close to the Italian community in a way, I know the stats well. Uh, they were expecting uh, something like uh, uh, 45,000 people to apply, so it's a very large number of people. And uh, uh, at the moment, there is less than 5%, that, uh, which is 10% of the Italian community, that instead is less than 5% that applied. And if there is a small margin, even 0.7%, they will calculate this as 3,225,000 people that they haven't applied. I mean, we're talking about really, really large numbers here. So a small percent can make a massive difference. And uh, I may add to what Christina said that also, uh, we are not sure, we don't know the numbers. So the stats that the Home Office, uh, uh, the estimates uh, uh, of different nationalities, uh, they're not that correct. And uh, we don't know indeed how, how many European citizens live here. 
for, um, for example, for the Bulgarians, it was 96,000 in the home office stats uh, that they, there are 96,000 Bulgarian citizens who need to apply. And so far, there were about uh, 200,000 applications uh, from Bulgarians done. So it means that there is a huge difference because uh, between the estimated numbers and the real numbers. And the other reason maybe is uh, because a lot of people um, they 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 could live remotely. They they could know may uh, they may not know uh, that uh, they need to do it uh, because of uh, language barriers uh, and uh, all the other reasons that they've uh, uh, explained. So it is concerned that quite a lot of people maybe will miss the deadline and it will be crucial for them. I would just add as well that when Home Office is um, telling us the number, when they are so proud of five million, whatever, I don't know how many, they always say the total. They include the fact that some people withdraw the applications, some have been cancelled, some have been uh, closed. Um, so when you look at the stats, you always have to read in between lines from the Home Office. And which uh, sectors of society are now the most vulnerable to missing out on this deadline? Is there any certain age groups, genders, nationalities that we're particularly concerned about as settled? As I was saying, is in our watch, and we have issued some information for uh, uh, senior EU citizens and uh, people with mental capacity, people who have uh, um, uh, reduced mental capacity. We are also concerned about children. Uh, parents sometimes do not understand that they need to apply for uh, children. They think that just uh, the workers in the family need to apply and as Tony was saying it's also uh, newborn babies that will need to be registered and they will have only three months to be registered after the first of every month. Yeah and maybe I could add here also agricultural workers, workers who, who uh, people who, who live remotely, people uh, who um, Again, who who lacks skills and uh, language uh, abilities, so maybe they they are in this category too, the risky one. Yeah, maybe Paula never wants to say something about the Roma migrant communities. So. Um. Yeah, um, also I think Roma communities, let's not forget about them. Um, they are from uh, different uh, European countries. Um, they are different tribes. When there are censuses done or whatever form where people are asked about their nationality or ethnicity, um, there's very little um, information collect uh, collected how many Roma people actually live in the UK. Um, the estimate is around 250,000 people, but we don't know for, for sure. And because they are nationals of uh, other um, countries, so for example, there are um, Slovak Roma, they will have a Slovak uh, passport. Uh, however, at home, they speak Romanese as a family. Um, they could be uh, also people from other countries, uh, like uh, I know Tony in Bulgaria, they might be from a variety of different nationalities, they might have Bulgarian passports, but they could be like Turkish Roma or, you know, so um, I think that's another, uh, another population. And also because often they don't speak good English, they might uh, lack literacy uh, skills in their own languages. Um, and just generally don't understand the, the system. So I, I do uh, fear for them. Yeah, and maybe I could add to very little to what they said, that it was a common, uh, we, uh, because we've been working a lot with the Roma communities and it's, it was very common what they were thinking about the children that uh, because the parents have uh, status, uh, the children don't, uh, don't need to apply for this. They are covered by their parent status. So uh, 
yeah, there are some beliefs like this in other groups too, but uh, it was quite uh, uh, common within the Roma community. I just thought that it's also um, worth mentioning that it's quite too difficult to predict what would be the um, number of applications made for joining family members, um, which is um, mm, quite yeah. uh, a common um, issue at the moment. Well, picking up on that issue, what major issues are still coming to us from people who contact Settled? You're all speaking to people who are either in tricky situations themselves or you're working with volunteers who are working with the people in tricky situations. What are some of the themes that are most common at the moment with the EU settlement scheme? So one of the main issues uh, we, uh, we had was uh, people breaking their continuity of residence. So to qualify for settled status. So these are people with pre-settled status who have gone abroad because of the pandemic. So they have broken their, their continuity of residence and they're very concerned that at the end of five years, they won't be eligible for settled status. The big issue is, uh, as we said, about the children because, uh, uh, because of this lack of passports uh, uh, and they can't apply for children. And we receive a lot of inquiries, inquiries about it. And also we receive a lot of inquiries about joining family members, uh, people who are uh, coming now to the UK, like parents or spouses or children. This is also very common. Um, can I just add also there are uh, joining family members coming from non-EU countries. Um, mm. so to get into the UK first, they have to apply for family uh, permit. And um, to, to get the family permit, they have to attend the biometrics um, uh, sort of appointment. And these centers are being run by contracted um, agencies. And in some countries, they are just closed. So you would have to travel to another country. Um, so again, COVID complicates things. Yeah, I would say that there are, uh, at the moment we are, look, we are helping people. Um, they are really hard to reach. Um, so uh, there are several barriers for people. Uh, uh, there is the knowledge barriers, people who weren't aware and they're still not aware. Many are, for example, the elderly, they, they disbelieve that they, this was an application just for uh, uh, the young people, the workers. There are people who have process barrier and the pandemic hasn't helped because the ID checking points at the home office has put in place across the country because of the pandemic did close and they're still closed. And then there are complex cases that require a, a lawyer or a, a people are spending quite a lot of time to put an application together. And, and one more thing that makes our lives quite difficult at the moment is because obviously the home office are at their, uh, over their capacity. So it's very difficult for people to get through on their phone lines. They sometimes they wait, uh, they say they are waiting 40, 50 minutes to get through and uh, uh, they receive uh, uh, a, a message that the queue is too long, sorry, and they just cut them off. And uh, uh, also um, for a few days, this online uh, messaging service was uh, out of order too. So people are coming uh, to us uh, asking about different things and complaining that uh, they can't get through and they need to because uh, they have to deal with something uh, regarding their applications. Let's do a quick wrap up then. Eva, I know you, you've got to go very soon. So I thought it would be good for each of you to say there's three months left to go to the deadline. What are your main focuses? What will you mainly be doing between now and then? And how are you going about it? Well, I think it's just keep going and you know do as much as as, as we can um, 
we are aware of vulnerable groups and well that's all we can do just keep going and um, trying to help as many people as possible uh Eastern European groups, some of them, they are quite vulnerable because, uh, you know, a lot of them, they joined uh, uh, the EU later. There are quite a lot of uh, economic uh, migrants. There are people who are working in different low-paid, low-skilled uh, low works, and uh, their English is not that good. Also, the Roma community, they are all from Eastern and Central Europe. So we are focusing on, uh, on the, exactly on this, uh, on these people. Uh, uh, and uh, this, uh, um, with these problems, the language problems and uh, the language barrier, the IT uh, problems, uh, and uh, um, also farm workers, because there are quite a lot who are, again, mainly Bulgarian, Romanians, or other, some other Eastern European countries. So this is the, the main focus for me at the moment. I can say from the volunteering point of view, we are looking for volunteers with special language skills. Uh, all Eastern European languages are good, um, especially volunteers with Romanian. And uh, if uh, anyone uh, has got a legal background or a immigration law background and wants to join us as a volunteer, uh, that would be great as well. That would be very useful. Yeah, I would just say that we really open the ripple effect. And um, if this video is watched by anyone who knows uh, any EU citizen, uh, just ask the question, spread the word in a nice way, in a friendly way, just say, hey, did you apply to the EU settlement scheme? And uh, if you if they say no, why? Uh, just say that there is a charity settled who was set up by European citizens to help European citizens. And we are more than happy to share our information. What a great way to wrap up. Uh, thank you to everyone for joining us at Settled Exhibition Space during European Movement Conference 2021. If you would like to find out more about Settled, please visit settled.org.uk or search for We Are Settled on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone.